Good afternoon. Uh, let me commence this afternoon by acknowledging the traditional uh, owners of the country of the land that we meet upon today and, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I extend those respects to any Aboriginals or Torres Strait Islanders watching this podcast today. Um, hello uh, and welcome. My name is Chris Fechner. I'm the Chief Customer and Digital Officer for Queensland Government. I'm joined this afternoon with, uh, by Mark Sidney and we're here for the second Queensland Digital Industry webcast uh, for Partners in Technology. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we received very positive feedback from the last webinar and we intend to host these sessions fortnightly uh, for briefings to keep uh, connected and share information with you, uh, our um, vendor community around digital and ICT. Today's webcast is being recorded uh, and in the unlikely event that we have technical issues, uh, it'll be available to view later today uh, using the same link. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to point out the interactive features of the webcast player uh, you're watching right now. Uh, below me, um, there, next to the timeline, you'll see a speech bubble. Uh, that's the ask a question bubble. Uh, that's how you'll be able to uh, interact with us during the Q&A portion of our webinar. Uh, if you'd like to pose a question uh, or, or post a comment, just click on the speech bubble, uh, fill out the form and click send and it'll get to us. Um, the Q&A session will be moderated by my colleague Mark and he'll guide you through the interactive features uh, later in this briefing. After the last briefing, we received many offers of assistance. Uh, my thanks to the goodwill and support of businesses and industry support uh, for Queensland COVID-19 response and recovery. Um, all ve uh, vendor COVID-19 service offerings and offers of assistance are being recorded, assessed and shared across government. Um, I also encourage you to share these offers uh, with key NGOs and community organisations to ensure that services to our most vulnerable uh, continued. So uh, government is providing some services but it's certainly uh, not up to us alone. We're getting incredible support from our NGO uh, environments to actually do outreach to the citizens of Queensland and we've got other areas, uh, industry areas that are actually supporting the businesses of Queensland outside of government as well. So I encourage you um, to reach out to those uh, industries and those areas as well with your offers of um, support and assistance. Uh, late last week, uh, Queensland's uh, launched its central uh, website, the covid19.qld.gov.au website. Uh, it went live. Uh, so this is the, the place that our Premier has uh, asked that we keep all of the information about those things specific to COVID-19. Uh, it'll be that central point of contact and we'll be linking out to different areas across Queensland Government. But if you really want to find out what's the most current information about COVID-19 from a Queensland government perspective, I um, really uh, would recommend that you go and have a look at that site and re return to it frequently because the content is changing really quickly. Uh, it also has uh, details about all of Queensland's uh, information and advice around how we should be responding to COVID-19 and it uh, also uh, links us back to our federal counterparts. Um, we've stood up this site quite quickly and it's just a indication of the way that government is responding to the COVID-19, especially in the uh, digital and ICT environment. Um, we started uh, doing one of these websites less than two weeks ago, I think really, and it's managed to get up uh, very quickly and we had a lot of support from the vendor community in this space as well. Uh, and we've been able to stand this up and extend it really quickly and we are adding features to it on an almost daily basis. Um, it, it really shows some of the collaboration that's going on across government. Uh, it also um, is highlighting some of the skills that we're requiring such as digital development and we'll, they'll continue to be very much in demand uh, skills for us in government. So. This is definitely an area that I think uh, will be an outreach to the digital and ICT uh, industry to help us with um, delivering on these services. Uh, while we understand so far we've been sprinting in our activities to get up to uh, responding to COVID-19, we're setting ourselves in for a marathon. So this will be the new normal for months to come. Uh, over the last week, I've 
participated in a number of cross-jurisdictional meetings through the Australian uh, Digital and Data Council and the inter-jurisdictional CIOs uh, forums. And they're talking about what's going on at the states, the territories and the federal levels. And I just wanted to take an opportunity to identify the areas that are showing up as common themes across the states, territories and, fed and federal government. So three of the biggest priorities that are coming out are cyber security, data sharing and digital transformation. Um, these priorities will support COVID-19 response needs, but they also support our longer term digital transformations. Um, within Queensland Government, our current digital and ICT priorities include uh, managed network services, telephones as a service, workforce capability and remote working, and supply of appropriately skilled digital professionals. Um, and, and I'd really like to point out those areas of agile development, uh, those DevSecOps engineering roles, uh, those customer experience designers, uh, um, capabilities of that, so, that short. Um, in looking at how we respond to uh, the ICT and digital demands coming to us from uh, the COVID-19 response, we've really had to look at some of the things we, we need to do more quickly. And I spoke last week about um, the need for us to be able to procure much more quickly than we would do under normal circumstances. Now, we talked about a, 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 a streamlining of this um, procurement process last time. And I just wanted to report to you today that we have actually launched our um, short form contract conditions for emergency procurement for COVID-19. Uh, they've been established. You can actually go to uh, the Queensland Government websites uh, to www.forgov.qld.gov.au slash procurement dash policy. And what we've actually set up is a mechanism that we can do short form procurement in a very rapid space uh, where the procurement is less than $1 million and that the total duration of the contract is less than 12 months. Um, what we're actually asking for in these things is that no, neither party can actually ask for amendments to the conditions associated with this contract and it's taken on a very good faith basis that uh, where we're doing things, we're doing it for expediency for the public good um, and we're hoping that that's going to uh, resonate well within the digital and ICT industry in uh, responding to those things. Um, so if you want to look and find more detailed uh, information about this and we'll get these uh, web links put up uh, in the Q&A results, um, but the, uh, the specific site that we've got for the uh, new short form contract is uh, www.forgov.qld.gov.au slash create dash ICT dash contract hash emergency. Um, in looking further into how we're supporting the, the digital industry, digital and ICT industry, we've also been uh, making sure that we're considering our SME participation scheme um, to provide SMEs with greater access to the Queensland government market um, and specifically, we have the existing provisions in there for uh, solutions up to $500,000 that demonstrate value for Queensland addressing government priorities. I'm, I'm really keen to hear from you on your ideas, priorities and challenges. Um, now, in particular, uh, from the industry side, I'm very interested to know whether there are things that you're experiencing that may have an impact on us, uh, specifically things like supply chain issues. We've had fairly good feedback from um, our partners that we've discussed with so far that currently supply chain is in delivery of equipment and services is not representing a significant problem to people. But uh, we are keen to understand whether there are areas where um, supply chain is being impacted by COVID-19. The other thing is, is that uh, even from your perspective as uh, partners to government, whether you're having any difficulty getting appropriately skilled staff um, and whether you believe the difficulty in um, obtaining those staff is going to increase or decrease um, around aspects of things like the availability of you know, contingent labour in the market and the like. Uh, we are doing some work 
around uh, work with retraining and we're seeking to build up some uh, new digital and ICT capabilities, hopefully making use of uh, the recently announced federal government retraining funds that are coming through. So we're working as a government to try and look at how we can uh, incorporate aspects of bringing in new capability into the marketplace. Uh, next I'll give you uh, an update in the space of cyber security. Um, we are taking the threat to our technology and delivery environments incredibly seriously during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we recognise that our normal ways of working have uh, changed significantly and this is putting a lot of pressure on both the, the community and government workers to make sure that we're vigilant and uh, able to understand the threats and the increased threat vectors from malicious actors um, operating during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're taking continued steps to improve um, visibility of cybersecurity threats across government. Um, we're working with industry to build out a centrally funded offering to agencies around minimum viable monitoring. Now what that means is, is we're going to put a layer of additional support on what the uh, departments within Queensland Government are doing normally, just to make sure that there's two sets of eyes across things for those risk areas that we're actually perceiving. Uh, we're also looking at enhancing where there hasn't been existing capability before. Um, so those areas where they've uh, had a reliance on you know, other agencies to support them, some of the smaller um, you know, government-owned corporations and, and things that don't, don't really have the numbers to have uh, a high capability in uh, cyber. So we're looking at how, the, how we can partner through our government chief information security office uh, with industry to um, provide some services to those areas that uh, really have the, the, the lowest internal capability. Um, we're also doing a lot of work on the collaboration space. So we're focusing on monitoring uh, high priority areas such as uh, identity. So are people in the areas where we expect them to be or are we seeing threats or people popping up in locations where we're not meant to be? So we've currently got uh, closed Queensland borders. If we have people starting to pop up in Western Australia or overseas, um, we're certainly going to treat those threats differently than we may have in an environment where people can travel. Um, we're also looking at remote access, uh, making sure that we've got the appropriate controls on how people are coming back into our systems. And of course, um, importantly for uh, the general day-to-day -day collaboration, those aspects around things like Office 365. Um, and in doing all this, we're looking at how we develop the repeatable patterns that can be delivered either internally or externally through managed services. And this is again where we're seeking um, input from the uh, digital and ICT industry on how we can do this effectively. Um, I'd really like to hear uh, what, what's going on in your area and how you're actually looking at us. I think um, we'll also just talk a little bit about just some quick areas on uh, where we've actually got some feedback from our um, internal departments. So. Uh, I, I noted from the questions last time that there was some fear that uh, ICT procurement had dried up um, a fair bit within uh, the, the departments and, and we've actually done a check around and uh, we've got our, probably our three biggest spend areas, transport and main roads, education and health, who are all reporting that there is still significant um, industry engagement and uh, all have highlighted the aspect of the SME participation as well. So. Um, there are still millions of dollars that are going through our monthly expenditure things around the digital and ICT framework. And as we actually uh, prioritise those responses to COVID-19, and as we actually go through the offers that we're receiving from the digital and ICT industry, uh, we expect that that, um, that that expenditure will continue to be had right across government. Um, we are looking to do things that help coordinate across government, so we're not all doing the same thing um, but doing it in a different way or doing it with different vendors. So we are looking to try and collaborate across and my uh, cohort of Chief Information and Chief Technology Officers across um, the, the whole of the sector are in close collaboration about those things that we need. In fact, uh, today I've recently just come from a session with the 
uh, chief information officers across the departments and there is a, a fairly strong desire across all of those areas to um, consolidate our efforts to make sure that we're focusing on delivering the most that we can through COVID-19 rather than doing things on our own or in isolation. Uh, so as I said earlier, I'd love to uh, hear what uh, you're looking for in terms of uh, what you want from us, what you'd like to hear from us and how you can help us. So I might hand over to Mark now to guide us through the Q&A. So thank you for uh, listening to me so far. Mark. Thanks, Chris. Um, look, we've had a couple of questions come through. Uh, I, you may have rattled off the short form contract for procurement a little bit too quickly for some. So if you would like to uh, just rehash that for those that weren't listening, um, we don't have it on a slide for you to read because the slide wouldn't be clickable, but we can also provide it to you later. But if you want to um, share that sure. again, Chris, that would be great. Um, so the, the, I suppose the highlights of this particular short form contract is it's it's been specifically designed for COVID-19 as an emergency response. Um, so under that condition is um, it's available. Uh, it's for procurements of less than $1 million and it's for an engagement of uh, no more than 12 months. And importantly, one of the things we're asking for from the, from the, uh, from the digital and ICT industry is that we're not seeking to make any amendments through either party on the conditions of the short form contract. It's taken at face value. Um, we've made it as simple as we believe it's possible to do, but maintain a, a minimum standard associated with ICT. Um, the information can be found, and I'll speak slowly as I do that this time, www.forgov, F-O-R-G-O-V, dot Q-L-D, dot gov, dot au slash create dash ict dash contract hash emergency. Now um, this is something that we've really tried uh, very quickly to stand up because we listened when you said uh, we have great ideas, we have opportunities but we're not involved in uh, procurement right now. Um, we are collecting uh, a list of all of the offers that are coming through. We are working through those offers. I have uh, today asked that all offers that are going through to other departments also feed their way back into our ICT procurement and contracts area so that we can actually um, assess these in concert rather than individually. Um, there is a, a strong sense of collaboration across uh, the departments and we're really looking to make sure that we can be as joined up as we can in our uh, response to COVID-19. Um, very much in keeping with the theme that we have on our new website about uniting against um, COVID-19. Uh, so hopefully that gives an answer to that question. Mark. Yeah, look if any more questions do come through about that, um, we can read it out again and we will uh, provide it as part of the information package um, like we did last time that will be available on the website. So just looking at the other questions that are coming through, um, there is a couple of questions about procurement that has been put on hold um, as a result of the other activities and whether that's likely to continue. And obviously that's a very different question for each different agency, but if there was a, uh, a view that you could express on that, that would probably be helpful. Yeah, so um, I, I will say that uh, definitely acknowledge that um, some procurements have been held up. There have been some recruitments that have been held up. Um, many of those are actually just temporarily held up um, while we assess our ability to actually take on uh, this additional work. So there, there are activities outside of COVID-19 response that are still going on within government um, and they are being undertaken on the basis that uh, there are no higher level priority actions that are necessary for the welfare of Queenslanders, Queensland businesses, or um, the, the, the uh, public sector agencies. Uh, so there is a prioritisation framework that's going through um, COVID-19 task force activities, and that's actually helping guide the most important things right across our government that are being led by you know, our government uh, as well. So. Um, I, I, I think that there are things that are slowing down, but there are definitely um, some things that are just temporarily halted. And, and I've seen over the last few days that um, a number of the procurements that were 
towards the end of their um, procurement cycle, so going through into that tender award function, have actually carried through. And I know that's true of a few in my department, um, where we've actually awarded services around development, where we've awarded services uh, in particular other areas as well. So um, whereas I think that there are some that are pausing, uh, that doesn't mean they're stopping. Uh, and I think the most appropriate thing to do is to formally submit a question through to the procurement contact associated with those things and ask for an official response as to whether these, um, this procurement is being cancelled, paused, or whether it's still ongoing. But you know, as far as I have seen, um, we are still progressing with a significant number of procurement activities around the digital and ICT space. Oh, thanks, Chris. Um, there have been a couple of comments come through that maybe the internet's running a bit slow this, this afternoon. Um, isn't, isn't that a statement? Um, so any questions that do come through or any comments that are made, if, if, if it's broken up and you haven't been able to hear them, they will be summarised in a, a key questions and answers uh, document which we'll produce at the end. Um, but the, other, the next question that's come through is, uh, can you please share the email address to lodge the offers and ideas to government? So that was the uh, um, st strategic ICT website, I think, or the, the address where people sent through the information last time. Yeah, it so, is. and I'm wondering where I have it here. Yeah, so I think it's actually on the second slide, um, but there's also, um, we've had 13 or 14 uh, that I was aware of the last time I checked, so there is actually a quite um, wide range of support for that. But um, did you manage to have that up there? It's not in my sites. I, I think it is, so we'll just it go through it. It's on the second slide, I think. We're just going to try and go through to the next slide, and I think it's there. Yeah, uh, yeah so ICT industry engagement at hpw.qld.gov.au. And I'll slip back into the, the right slide now. Um, so the questions are still coming through, and you, you did talk briefly about... Uh, Transport and Main Roads, um, Health and the Education Department that are still actively procuring. And uh, is there anything further that you'd like to talk about with um, those agencies that um, might be of interest to Yeah, I, I think um, there is one call out around um, digital capability that we're actually seeking for a significant project in COVID-19 around um, improving our identity and access to digital transactions. Um, we're, we're actually trying to really accelerate that process and what we're actually looking to do is approach this in a different way that we have done for what were the component parts of that project over the last sort of year or so. Um, so one call out that I'd really like to get uh, responses from either from the contract market or the professional service market is the aspect of um, agile coaches or scrum masters. Uh, we're looking for um, some really specific resources. I think we're looking for six or so at the moment. Um, but I think what we're actually seeing is um, a lot of pivots away from more traditional waterfall delivery within government because of the rapidly, require, uh, rapidly changing environment and the requirement to get um, solutions out very quickly. Uh, so I think um, very much those uh, partners that we've got in digital that are in the product development space, that are in uh, the agile developments with the continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline sort of models, um, and also those agile capability people, so scrum masters, coaches, uh, agile coaches. Um, I think there'll be a, an increased demand. Certainly we're looking for people to come in and certainly we're looking for those, uh, those partners that are looking to support COVID-19 responses because I would say that all of the things that we're building now pretty much are related to COVID-19 um, and we're looking to do those things quickly and we're looking to do those things efficiently and affordably. Um, so we're really seeking some resources to help guide us into those more modern ways of delivering and those short cycle developments. Thanks Chris. Um, you know with 180 people watching I thought there'd probably be more questions in this. Uh, maybe they'll come a little bit later. The um, yeah, there are, there are several people acknowledging that uh, tenders that have been put on hold. Um, but as you said, that it's a sort of a temporary shift of focus to what can be delivered and what needs to be delivered over the next short time frame. Uh, someone really wants us to go back to, to the slide with the email address. I will do that. So just down the bottom right there, you should be able to see that when that comes through. Um, 
Look, there actually hasn't been a lot more questions coming. Maybe there's, there's still being considered. Oh, there's another one that's appeared on the screen. Uh, we also talked about um, themes that the industry might be interested in us talking about going forward. Would you like to discuss that? Um, so so I, might, I might just repeat the three themes that we talked about um, that were states, territory and federal jurisdiction sort of conversations. Those things around identity, those things around uh, data sharing and those uh, digital transformation. I think, um, you know, we, we've talked about identity significantly. Data sharing, I think, is uh, one of those key things. So um, everybody would have noticed uh, a very, very high um, uh, instance of uh, lots of dashboards, lots of modelling coming through, uh, lots of um, data warehousing, lots of um, charts coming out, uh, everybody wanting to see information presented in a different way. Um, as a government we're trying to respond to that in a fairly structured way, so looking at how we might um, bring together diverse parts of data from across different departments and aggregate it together and present it in a way. So. Um, Again, we are seeking capabilities that are in that data aggregation, data uh, cleansing, data you know, management space and data presentation space to help us put together what we believe will be effective um, dashboards, scorecards, um, models for how we're actually um, responding to COVID with the activities that we're doing now. Much of that is actually coordinated with the federal government, uh, so our intention is not to duplicate anything that's happening with the federal uh, environment. But what we want to do is be able to show those things to Queenslanders that are specific to them. Um, and uh, I believe that there'll be uh, capabilities required in that data uh, and information space as well. So we have had some offers already come in, um, but we're very, very uh, interested in looking at how we can partner with the digital and ICT industry to really provide to citizens and businesses information that can help them to understand what's going on in the environment around them. Thanks, Chris. Um, another question that has come through is where someone has responded to a tender from one of the government agencies and they recognise that what they're offering is quite likely of value to multiple other government agencies. Is there anything that you can talk to there how um, that type of marketplace or, or that type of scenario can be better leveraged? Uh, yes, so um, there has been some ad hoc sharing of this sort of information. So um, we've, we've seen that in uh, aspects like video conferencing, productivity and collaboration where one agency has gone off to do an investigation as to what's going to be the most suitable and they've shared that information and we've, we've joined that up to put it together. But um, we are using a number of forums, so we have got uh, sort of a, a task force that, that are, you know, each agency has a COVID-19 task force and it's coordinated over and above that with a whole of government cut task force that's actually ran, run out of uh, Department of Premier and Cabinet. They're actually looking at the things that are coming in together and looking at the prioritisations. We've got groups like the, um, the, the CIO leadership group that sits inside uh, you know, that comes together to talk about those uh, digital and ICT uh, initiatives that are coming into the different areas and within the customer and digital office, which is the function that I sit in the front of, uh, we're actually trying to coordinate that and share that information back. Um, but uh, as I started out at the, at the beginning of this, one of the things that we are actually asking everybody to do is put, out, put these um, submissions into uh, uh, locations like the uh, email address that's sitting on the thank you slide here but um, we're also asking the CIOs to pass that information to us as well so we're coordinating all of the offers that are coming through and there has been certainly cases where an offer hasn't been suitable for one department but there's been uh, like an understanding that there may be a need for it in another and that sharing has actually been occurring um, Sometimes these things are taking a little while to surface and sometimes they actually need one or two um, doors for them to come in. But by trying to pull these things together and tie them in with the task force priorities, uh, we have a better chance of actually moving into a situation where good ideas that can be used across multiple uh, departments or that 
may have come in for the wrong door and need to go to another part, department for execution can actually be um, carried out. Thanks, Chris. Uh, another question that's come through is talking about um, how we're responding with open data. Um, is there anything that you can share in, the, in that space? Uh, so, uh, Queensland will continue to manage its open data environment and keep with its commitment to actually share information. Um, as we're actually creating uh, data sets now that are, that are COVID-19 related, there's, most of those are actually quite personally identifiable. Um, there is a lot of restriction on how we can actually use and access that data. We actually have a group working on um, the data uh, usage issues now about the policy and regulation associated with the information we're collecting around COVID. Um, in our uh, work with the federal government, the, the federal government has um, said that they are going to look at releasing de-identified data around COVID-19 to the states. As we receive that de-identified data, our intention is to aggregate it with our own data and look at how we might de-identify it. Um, the ability for us to do this and provide information out to the uh, to the market in terms of open data, with especially around the COVID-19 ones, is actually going to be limited by our capacity in that space. So our first priority will be to use that data for the purposes of, for which it's intended. Um, things like uh, monitoring quarantine conditions, uh, looking at uh, reporting breaches associated with you know, public gatherings, um, making sure that we've got the tracing information coming through uh, around contacts around COVID-19, uh, making sure that we've got um, the information flowing through about who's applying for what grant or for what entitlement. Uh, but those things are not easily shareable uh, until they go through a de-identification summarisation sort of model. So um, we will continue to keep to our promise of open data. I think that there will be definite issues associated with the time with the, the uh, fast release of some of this data because it will simply fall a little bit lower in the priorities in terms of direct response. All right, there hasn't actually been any further new questions through for a little while. Um, I'm just one, giving it one last chance here to see if anything comes up. It's not looking very good. Um, so look, there has been um, one or two questions about the government's use of uh, IT contractors or uh, what we call contingent labour. Is there any insights that you can offer around that at, at the moment? Uh, so without, without being too specific in this particular case, um, the ICT contractors area probably has been one of those areas that's been harder hit by this. Um, you know, the, the professional services contracts, the, you know, the supply contracts have tended to carry through. Um, I would simply acknowledge that um, people that are in the, uh, the contractor space or the contingent labour space uh, probably have been the, the, the earliest people to be impacted by projects that have slowed, um, budgets that have been uh, reorganised. Uh, you would imagine or you would know from what's been reported that um, all governments are expending an enormous amount of money uh, looking at um, response and recover activities around COVID-19. And in all cases, um, we're being asked to closely examine what we're spending money on and see whether that money uh, continues to have the highest value proposition in the environment that we're in around COVID-19 responses. And in cases where we haven't actually got that justification, we are slowing or stopping some of those things and um, as a consequence I think uh, areas of contractors and contingent labour are those ones that um, unfortunately drop off first. Um, we are again committed to um, using local Queensland resources, be they contractors, be they professional services, for COVID-19 responses. Um, we are looking at how we do this effectively and affordably um, and um, again, if you are a contractor that's working in the marketplace, if you are seeking engagement, um, I think it's also great for you to be able to understand where your capabilities might lie in terms of um, prioritisation of, 
of tasks associated with COVID-19. Probably not um, the most effective answer for everybody who's a contractor in the space, but I, I unfortunately I think that is a, a, just a reflection of the world that we're in and that's the things that um, are happening across uh, the, the whole of um, the, the country in terms of people being put out of work for closure of small businesses, uh, people that are doing stuff in the space of um, you know, casual work. Uh, contractors probably fit a little bit into that category where the certainty of the future for those things has always been shorter, but the market's sort of been in a position where there's been longevity in them. But um, in this case, I think there will be a downside for that for a period. Uh, and um, it, we, will, we will continue to look at employing contractors, but I don't think the rate of employment will be quite at what it would be in, in a normal time. Yeah, and that's not just a local problem, unfortunately, is it? No, certainly not a local problem. It's been reflected and talked about right across all the other jurisdictions. So um, the, the last question is a bit of a joined up question from a couple of people and it's probably just an opportunity to summarise a couple of the key points that you've um, covered. Uh, one of which is about and local engagement um, and a local, the, supporting the local industry or consuming from the local industry. Um, and then basically that is the, the, the last question that I think we have time for, for today. Okay. So uh, I think it's probably a good one to wrap up on. Um, Again, it's a reiteration of the commitment that we have um, to ensuring that after COVID-19 that we have a ongoing digital and ICT industry in Queensland. Um, we are fully recognising our responsibility as a government to make sure that we support our local industries. Um, we are purposefully looking at um, how we can engage with SMEs, how we can engage with local providers, how we can actually um, work with our um, really big suppliers as well to get them to engage as subcontractors, um, small to medium enterprises that are sitting inside of uh, Queensland. Um, they're they're uh, certainly our future and we're looking to protect our future uh, and the um, engagements around the 500,000 SME engagements, the 10% prioritisation for SME contributions and the short form um, emergency ICT procurement for new ideas for people who aren't on panels are all responses to making it more accessible to our local Queensland industries to uh, work with us and support us and the people of Queensland through the COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks, Chris. Um, that pretty much wraps up all the questions. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we're actually proposing to hold the next webinar on the 23rd of April. Uh, so that's penciled in at this stage. Uh, so keep your eye out for the notification. Um, we will make a Q&A of key questions and answers available via the Business Queensland website um, where this event is um, published within government. And we're looking at publishing it through another couple of channels as well. So. Um, Unless you'd like to wrap it up any further, Chris, I think uh, we're done. So, uh, uh, as, as this is uh, the Thursday before the, what mm -hmm. is normally the Easter long weekend, <laughs> I would like to wish everyone a uh, safe um, and protected, socially distant um, Easter. So, our Premier has put out information about staying indoors or staying um, within the so social distancing. Um, I just call out to everybody that... Uh, uh, the government is very serious in its, its approach to stopping the spread of coronavirus through social distancing and controls for flattening the curve. It, it seems to be going very effectively across um, the, the country, um, but in Queensland especially is I think doing well in that, although some hot spots are popping up. Um, so all those aspects of border crossings, of going away for vacations uh, over this long weekend, I just ask that you reconsider any of those things had they gone there and you um, have quiet, peaceful, relaxing time at, at home um, and do those things with your immediate family rather than the extended family. And uh, we will be able to work through this and get through it together. And I would also just like to finish with a slight apology for my very fumbled acknowledgement of country uh, at the start of this. So. Um, I'd like to acknowledge again that we meet on traditional lands of uh, the Aboriginal people uh, and I 
pass my, pay my respects to elders past and present and extend those to anybody that was listening in here today. Um, so thank you and have a happy Easter and we'll see you in a fortnight's time. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Mark.